Okay, in this video, we are gonna do a Calc BC FRQ practice problem, and uh, it's about arc length. It's kind of a unique problem, uh, and it's super old. So this one's from 1971. It was number six on the BC exam that year. It says, find a function f that has a continuous derivative on the interval from zero to infinity, and that has both of the following properties. So the first one is the graph of f goes through the point one, one. So this really uh, is just going to help us solve for C. So that's how, like when I look at that, I think that's just telling you how to solve for C. Number two, the length L of the curve from one, one to any point X comma F of X is given by the formula L equals natural log of X plus F of X minus one. So that's like really weird uh, in my mind, but I kind of know what to do with it, right? Because I know what arc length is. So arc length in general should just be the integral from the point we know, which is 1, 1, so 1 to x of square root of 1 plus f prime of x squared dx. And then we're told it's equal to this thing. Uh, I mean, that's like a weird idea that it would be equal to that, but that's definitely an equation that we can set up. So there's your arc length part, right? So we had to use that. Um, what's interesting, in the original problem in 1971, they gave you the arc length formula, which I think is crazy. They would not do that today. Um, but we have this. Now, what are we going to do? Like, this is an equation that you can't really solve in its current state, but we can find the derivative. This now becomes a second fundamental theorem uh, problem. So derivative of both sides. So we have the derivative of this side. So that's the second fundamental theorem. And then the derivative of the right-hand side is just uh, like a couple derivative rules, I guess. So we have this. This is, it's a really interesting problem. I'm, I haven't done a problem like this before. That mixes like so many ideas. Um, on the left-hand side, so you take the upper bound, you sub it in. Oh, I should actually have been using like, uh, I guess it should be f prime of t and then dt. Uh, I have like some problem with the variables that I'm using here, but uh, we're gonna sub in the upper bound and then multiply by the derivative of the upper bound, which ends up just this because the derivative of the upper bound is one. So when we try to chain rule it, we just do times one. Derivative of natural log of x is one over x. Derivative of f of x is just f prime, and then the derivative of one is zero. So we're at this point. Um, so the next thing that I'm gonna do, now we have to like solve this, I guess, for f prime. So there's an f prime in a radical, so I'm gonna square both sides. So squaring this, squaring that. Um, okay, so that'll give me one plus uh, the quantity f prime squared equals, and then we're expanding this. So first thing squared, multiplying together times two, and then the second thing squared, just expanding binomials. Probably done that a thousand times. Uh, the f primes, the f prime squareds just cancel, uh, and then we can like move everything to one, you know, one side or the other. So uh, I'm gonna move the uh, one over x squared over, just to like clean it up a little. I'm gonna go to the next page. Uh, so here I've just copied it over. Multiply by x. Just doing this piece at a time. Uh, and then I'm going to divide by two. And then I will know what f prime is. So think about all that work that we've done so far. Um, and we only know what f prime is. Like our objective is to actually know what uh, f of x is. So now we have to integrate. So we're finding an antiderivative. So f of x, you could consider this solving a differential equation. Uh, one fourth x squared and then minus two natural log absolute value of x plus c. Well, item number one that we were told is really how you can solve for c. So I'm going to plug in 1, 1. So 1 is equal to 1 fourth, 1 squared, minus 1 half, natural log of 1, and then plus C. Natural log of 1 is 0, so that's kind of gone. Um, and then, uh, so this is really just 1 minus 1 fourth is C. So 3 fourths is equal to C. All right, so now I know what the function is. And that, that was like kind of our objective, right? So f of x should be 1 fourth x squared minus one half natural log of the absolute value of x plus three fourths. But uh, there's also that additional piece of information. The, the function that I've written so far actually just has a domain of all x except for zero. So that's not continuous on an open interval that contains the initial condition. So it's not really the full solution. Since I know that I need to go through the point one one, I'm just gonna drop the absolute value. And when I drop the absolute value around uh, the x in the natural log, it changes the domain from all reals except zero to just all reals greater than zero, which is zero to infinity, which I think is the actual answer. So we're dropping our absolute value. I'm gonna say the final answer to this 
is 1 fourth x squared minus 1 half natural log of x, not absolute value of x, and then plus 3 fourths. I also think you could go back to the previous step and just do comma x is greater than 0. It's kind of a weird thing to do when you could just drop the absolute value, but I think it would be fine. But anyway, this is like a really good, very old uh, free response question. It contains a lot of ideas that, uh, you know, you have to like mix and match, and it's definitely non-standard. I think it's great practice. I hope you have found this helpful, and uh, good luck.